Hello, and welcome to Prism of the Past, a weekly series about historical events, people, and situations from the fascinating to the forgotten. I'm the Illuminati, and today I'm talking about a topic that sounds like it's been pulled straight from a horror movie. We're talking about human samples collected from babies, hidden from the public, initiated by the government level conspiracy shenanigans. If it weren't for all the sources and the fact that this project was eventually made public, I'd assume it was made up by someone who wore a few too many tinfoil hats. But nonetheless, I'm going to be talking about something called Project Sunshine. And no, this is not the nonprofit from New York, but the series of research studies from the 50s, 1950s. Obviously this happened a while back and I haven't been covering this because there's not really new information to be had, but it fits perfectly within Prism of the Past. So let's dive right in and talk about what Project Sunshine was and how it went so, so very wrong. The Atomic Energy Commission eventually declassified a document called Worldwide Effects of Atomic Weapons, Project Sunshine. But for a while, Project Sunshine's existence was just a mystery. To put it briefly, the project was meant to study how radiation affects humans, seeing as not much was known about it at the time. We still don't have all the answers, but in 1953, when the project first began, the double helix twisted ladder structure of DNA had only just been discovered. So as you can guess, the understanding of radiation and how it worked was only in its infancy. Now I found Project Sunshine, the research report itself online, and it states under the acknowledgements that a large part of the preliminary report was developed by Dr. Libby's suggestions. Dr. Willard Libby was a key player in Project Sunshine, a physical chemist known for his role in developing radiocarbon dating. He revolutionized archeology span and paleontology with this process as radiocarbon dating works by comparing carbon isotopes. Basically, Dr. Libby helped create carbon dating. He studied radioactive elements. The guy understood science in a way I know I never will. But as we see portrayed in media and books all the time, sometimes these mad science geniuses can sort of sacrifice their humanity and empathy if it's for the sake of their research. There's no denying Dr. Libby was a brilliant man. The dude fucking helped make carbon dating a thing and that's impressive. Later, he even won the Nobel Peace Prize, but in 1960, Project Sunshine? Well, even Wikipedia seems eager to erase that from its history because it's only one blip, one sentence in his timeline. As the New York Times puts it, in the 1950s, the federal government established a worldwide network to collect tissue secretly to monitor the effects of radioactive fallout from nuclear weapons tests, according to documents uncovered by a presidential panel. The President's Advisory Committee on Human Radiation Experiments today released documents from the old Atomic Energy Commission that outlined efforts to collect tissue, primarily bone from cadavers without obtaining the permission of the next of kin. The documents show the commission members were aware of the dubious legal and ethical grounds for the research. A transcript of the secret meeting on Jan 18, 1955, called by the commission to discuss the tissue gathering for Project Sunshine shows that Dr. Willard Libby, a University of Chicago researcher who was a commission member, said there were great gaps in important data about fallout because of difficulty in obtaining human samples, particularly from children. I don't know how to get them, Dr. Libby is quoted as saying in the transcript, but I do say that it is a matter of prime importance to get them and particularly in the young age group. So human samples are of prime importance. And if anyone knows how to do a good job of body snatching, they will really be serving their country. Ah yes, body snatching children. So this was actually a thing, this really happened. Even if research is important, do the ends justify the means? Some might argue, yes, they were only taking samples of children that had passed away, but to say it doesn't sit well with me is a bit of an understatement. The article continues and explains in some detail what Project Sunshine was founded to do. Project Sunshine sought to measure the amount of strontium-90 being absorbed by humans because of nuclear testing. Strontium-90, a calcium-like radioactive substance produced from nuclear explosions, is absorbed by plants and animals and is passed through food to humans whose bones absorb it. The project was intended to use that absorption to gauge possible health problems caused by atomic tests. I'm not saying the study of the effects of radiation on human tissue is wrong, but I do think the way they went about it at Project Sunshine was alarming to say the least. From all the research I've found and the articles I've read, it hasn't been the project itself that people had a problem with. No one's come out and stated, how dare these doctors try to research the effects of radioactivity on human tissue? That would be ridiculous. It's not what was done, but how. Someone can have the best of intentions, but it doesn't matter when their actions are so incredibly harmful. 
And even though Dr. Libby released some of the files in the 50s, many details weren't made clear until years later in 1994. The Washington Post stated in May of that year that, Although some studies on Project Sunshine were published in the 1950s, most of the details about the Chicago Baby Project, a part of Project Sunshine, were contained in secret government documents that were declassified only last month. Researchers at the Los Alamos Laboratory, a DOE facility in New Mexico, found the documents in their files earlier this year. The project was led by Willard Libby, a University of Chicago scientist and senior AEC official who is now dead. Researchers gathered data on the babies to determine how much fallout humans could bear, said Steve Galson, a DOE radiation specialist. The experiment was probably also useful in deciding what the health effects were of the nuclear weapons being tested at that time, he said. The researchers used babies because they provided the best measure of the amount of radiation in the body that was due to fallout rather than being ingested food or from other sources, according to scientists familiar with the study. All of the babies were stillborn in the early to mid 90s, according to the documents. None of them died as a result of radiation treatments, DOE specialists said. I can understand that these tests were important and even why babies were necessary to some really fucked up extent. Even if you had several different adults living in one area, one could be eating fast food every day, another could be on some plant diet. There's far more variables to consider. A stillborn baby that has only been exposed to its mother womb, that's it. It's, you know, less factors, I guess, to worry about in a study, I guess. I am having a hard time rationalizing this, obviously. But the callous way these babies are spoken about is really what makes me see red here. And maybe I'm just too sentimental, um, but this is a line from Don Peterson, a retired Los Alamos researcher familiar with the tests. And this is what got to me. This was a case of children who were no longer beneficial to the population being able to provide information that was enormously important for the rest of the world's children. No longer beneficial to the population? Tell that to the parents who never got to say goodbye to their babies. I know I'm about the facts, especially when it comes to discussing businesses, MLMs, that sort of thing. And as we go through the facts, I do try to remain as unbiased as possible. But even if Dawn is technically correct that these infants may not benefit the rest of the world, that doesn't mean that their life wasn't valued or something to be used by researchers without permission. In a 1995 British documentary, Deadly Experiments, Jean Pritchard, a British mother of a stillborn baby whose legs were removed by British hospital doctors in 1957, said she was forbidden to dress her daughter for her funeral to prevent her from finding out what had happened. I asked if I could put her christening robe on her, but I wasn't allowed to. And that upset me terribly because she wasn't christened, she said. No one asked me about doing things like that, taking bits and pieces from her. Can someone honestly look that mother in the eye and simply say, oh, well, it didn't count because the baby was no longer beneficial to the population. It would have been one thing if these parents willingly donated their children to this project, but Project Sunshine didn't even ask. Now, the backlash has obviously been gigantic. When more information was revealed, not only did articles begin making their rounds, but Bill Clinton, president of the US at the time, conducted a formal investigation into the matter. Sue Rabbit Roth, a Cookson Senior Research Fellow, discussed their findings in a paper called Project Sunshine in the Slippery Slope. She wrote, Project Sunshine was one of a wide range of studies examined by President Clinton's Advisory Committee on Human Radiation Experiments chaired by the ethicist professor Ruth Faden of the Bioethics Institute of the John Hopkins University. The final report of the advisory committee published in 1995 gave a rather perfunctory summary of the project in comparison with the fuller considerations of experiments involving living subjects. In sum, during the 1950s, the AEC, Atomic Energy Commission, promoted human tissue sampling for studies on fallout and other research, and its efforts involved secrecy and deception. The AEC evidently considered the legal aspects of body snatching, but there is no evidence that it sought to consider any independent ethical requirements for disclosure to families of the subjects or the subjects themselves where alive whose tissue was sampled. While further rationale for keeping the data gathering secret may have existed, in surviving documents, concern for public relation emerges as the dominant motivation. At the same time, the AEC recognized that secrecy hampered the conduct of research that it believed was central to the public interest. So to break that down quickly, it pretty much states that even though they considered the legal aspects, they didn't give a damn about the legal or ethical requirements. And doctors, by the way, do have an ethical code that they have to follow. They can't just do anything for the sake of medicine. 
The list of principles of medical ethics range from competent medical service with compassion and respect for human dignity to respecting the rights of patients and continuing to study and apply advanced scientific knowledge in their practice. As far as I can tell, this breaks at least several of those. They didn't respect the rights of these mothers. This broke the law. They didn't deal honestly with patients and this showed no respect to human dignity. Hell, I'm sure they broke more, but this is just at first glance. If it's that easy to be sure this research team broke the code of ethics, then of course they knew they wouldn't bother to try. The advisory committee noted in the opening pages of its final report that the central ethical and moral issues in reviewing programs such as Project Sunshine revolved around the government's attempt to serve two critical purposes, safeguarding national security and advancing medical knowledge, which led to difficult choices at the intersection of geopolitics, science, and medicine. Here's where things become even more concerning because Dr. Libby wasn't only asking for babies within the US. This wasn't a case of a few mothers being robbed of their infants' bodies. Not that that would be bad enough. This was on a global scale. On the 4th of June, 2001, the UK Daily Mail reported that bodies of stillborn British babies and infants who died at just a few months old were shipped to the US in the 1950s and 1960s to be used in nuclear experiments. After the test, the bodies were cremated and radioactivity in the remains were measured. The experiments were said to be codenamed Operation Sunshine and Britain was said to have been involved in 1955 when Dr. Willard Libby appealed for large numbers of bodies, preferably stillborn or newborn babies, for experiments on the effects of fallout from atom bomb tests. Libby was quoted as saying, if anyone knows how to do a good job of body snatching, they will really be serving this country. And there's that quote again, if anyone knows how to do a good job of body snatching, they'd be serving their country. Uh, Say that one out loud to yourself and tell me you don't exactly feel like a scumbag or some kind of movie villain. It almost sounds unbelievable, but multiple articles quote that exactly that way. And it leaves no doubt in my mind that this is exactly what Dr. Libby said, what the research was based on, secret body snatching. And the list goes on with just how many people worldwide seem to be affected by Project Sunshine. This article stated that over 15 years, hospitals in Britain, America, Canada, South America, Australia, and Hong Kong gave 6,000 bodies, of which almost 50 came from the Central Middlesex Hospital, the Royal Cancer Hospital in London, the Royal Hospital for Sick Children, and the hospitals in Bristol and Glasgow. The Daily Mail implies that whole bodies were shipped to nuclear test sites and then levels of radioactivity were measured after cremation. In fact, bones from dead infants were retrieved in countries around the world, then ashed and measured for radioactivity, and the results were reported to the US researchers. The Glasgow Sunday Herald reported on the 17th of June, 2001, that the thigh bones of more than 2,100 children who died during the 1960s in Scotland were ashed and analyzed for radioactive contamination. Most came from York Hill Sick Children's Hospital in Glasgow between 1959 and 1970. One of the doctors who led the research, Professor Gavin Arneil, defended the research as being ethical at the time it was conducted. It was vital in exposing the risks of nuclear fallout, he said, and parents were better to remain in blissful ignorance. So yeah, claiming that it's better for parents to be better off not knowing what happens to a dead child is, you know, straight up body snatching. I'm not saying I want to know exactly what would happen to me if my body was donated to science, every gory detail, every body part used, every experiment, like no thank you. But you can't defend this as ethical when a woman's stillborn baby's legs were amputated, not allowing her to christen her own child. If I were her, I'd want to know who the fuck touched my kid and took their fucking legs. Like, I can't believe that's something I have to actually say. As for modern day reactions, today Project Sunshine seems largely forgotten and there's not much talk about it. And I mean, I kind of get why. We live in a crazy world right now and Project Sunshine has been over for a long time. So it's probably just dead news and information to a lot of people. And maybe this is going to sound like I'm some crazy conspiracy theorist here, but I'm not convinced we know everything. Documents came out in 1956, but details weren't revealed until the 90s, about 40 years later. So who says they aren't hiding anything more now? Hell, even if they're not, it's terrifying that it stayed hidden for such a long time in the first place. The Sydney Morning Herald reported on the topic in 2001, stating that by mid 1960, the team at Project Sunshine had collected 9,000 samples of human bone from 30 locations. These have included fetuses, single bone samples from individuals of all ages and whole skeletons, most from New York, Culp wrote in Science. The Australian samples included 52 from babies under four, 27 from children and teenagers and 87 from adults. They were the first of thousands more taken over the next 20 years. 
By 1960, the Project Sunshine team had concluded that plants which had taken up strontium-90 from contaminated rain was the main way the radioactive substance entered the human diet. What the gruesome research had also revealed was that strontium-90 levels in humans around the world was on the rise, increasing 50% between 1958 and 1959. Project Sunshine wasn't the only unethical nuclear test being done, however. The Herald goes on to say that horrific experiments such as dosing pregnant women with radioactive cocktails and radiating the testicles of prisoners tended to overshadow the bone stealing issue when the report was handed down in 1995. But it was revived this week in a British newspaper with the claim that stillborn babies from Australia were among those snatched and shipped to the US for classified nuclear experiments. These tests on pregnant women were apparently shown in a UK Channel 4 documentary called True Stories Deadly Experiments. 91 pregnant women had been injected with radioactive iodine in the 1960s to monitor the effect in the fetus. Women came forward saying they had memories of being fed or injected with radioactive substances, and these disturbing stories overshadowed the final reports about Project Sunshine. And I can understand why that would happen, honestly, but the disturbing part more than anything for me was the fact that this started to become a pattern. Again, not really trying to sound like, you know, I'm about to put on a tinfoil hat and go shouting through the streets about the government coming after us and injecting us with shenanigans, but you know, there's no denying that this is plain creepy and wrong on so many levels. After the story came out, Colin James from The Advertiser reported on another. 300 South Australian mothers have learned for the first time where their babies were buried following their deaths in public hospitals up to 40 years ago. They are among 1,200 people for whom the state government has been forced to provide counseling over the removal of body parts and bones from dead relatives without their knowledge. The Department of Human Services has conducted official investigations into 1,500 cases in response to revelations that public hospitals had conducted autopsies on children and removed organs, tissue samples, and bones without the knowledge or consent of families. A departmental spokeswoman said locating the 300 burial sites has been a fantastic result because the women predominantly in their 50s or 60s had found out finally what happened to their babies. These were women who, because of how things were done at the time, never got to see their babies or hold their babies and who have wondered for many years what happened to them, she said. As a result of the investigations we conducted, we have located their babies for them and have been able to tell them where they are. There has been a mix of emotions from extreme anger and betrayal to relief that finally some answers have been given about what happened. Yeah, it's a fantastic result, but I guess I'd just call it some well-deserved closure. It's so disturbing and disheartening to not only hear that these women finally are reunited with their babies after 40 whole years, but to wonder how many weren't able to. If there were many thousands and thousands of babies being brought and shipped and pieces taken to Project Sunshine, then how many burial sites does this account for? It can't be all that money. The samples may have revealed important research, but there was no other way to learn this information, like seriously? Can we truly say in all confidence that this was worth the inhumanity these stillborns and mothers were shown? Now, I'm not a mom and I'm pretty confident and I've spoken about it many times that I'm not gonna be a mom, but I do know that if I were told I wasn't permitted to bury my child, I would fucking lose it. I don't wanna tear apart anyone calling it a fantastic result because yeah, from one perspective, it is. I can see why the spokeswoman would see it that way. But if I were a parent, I wouldn't walk away from my baby's grave going, oh yeah, this is great he was found. Like, thank you so much when absolutely no justice was given. And I had no answer for decades. If these mothers were 30 years old when they gave birth, that means they'd be in their 70s by this point in time. It's an awful lot to consider, but what if some of these mothers passed away before ever knowing? For some of them, it's too little too late. Project Sunshine's own report asked the same thing in summary of its own conclusions. They write, in assessing the hazard to large population, it is necessary to ask who or what is at risk as well as what is the nature of that risk. The risk is simply this, the bone retentive and radioactive properties of strontium, a chemical component, endow it with a high carcinogenic capability. A given amount above threshold fixed in the bone will cause a certain average percentage of the population to die of bone cancer comparable with that observed in victims of radium poisoning. The Sunshine model, while containing at the present writing, some of the uncertainties of earlier models regarding fallout, availability in soil, et cetera, bypasses a number of intermediary, biologically unknown factors by a single assumption. The bones of an individual who grows up in an environment of a maintained given ratio of strontium to natural strontium will contain strontium and natural strontium in the same ratio. This model is why they stole the bones of stillborn babies for years, but it's that first sentence that gets to me the most. 
it's necessary to ask who or what is at risk. Dr. Libby and the others on Project Sunshine weren't stupid people. These aren't Huns or former MLMers or annoying friends on Instagram that buy Monate, failing to calculate the risk that you'll lose your hair. This was a Nobel Prize winner who knew the consequences of his actions, actively promoted body snatching. It's, it, it's insanely fucked up. Not only does this seriously harm the parents that dealt with this in emotional ways that I can't even begin to understand, but it ruins trust. So is it really any wonder that we do have conspiracy theorists when there are things like this that just seems too insane to be true, but they actually are? In 2006, ABC News stated that the sheer volume of papers and the fact that they were conducted around 50 years ago make investigations a challenging prospect and could explain why governments of countries that participate in Project Sunshine are only recently waking up to their parts in the ghoulish studies. I wonder how many other studies have yet to really wake up to this, how many mothers weren't reunited with their babies and how anyone can possibly defend or justify this. Even if it was stillborn babies, they could have asked the parents, explaining what was happening. If they said no, that's their right. I know what some of you may say, and it has been said before. The Clinton Advisory Committee, which disbanded in 1995, warned against retrospective moral judgment. Is it correct to evaluate the events, policy, and practices of the past against ethical standards and values that we accept as valid today, but that may not have been widely accepted then, it asked. And to that question, I say yes. It's absolutely valid to evaluate the events of the past and condemn them. It's not suggesting that we hold on to these intense grudges and what is done is done. But the whole point of history and explaining how horribly wrong these actions were is to learn from them. We can't correct what's been done, but providing these mothers with closure in seeing the graves, exposing these actions for what they were and not defending the behavior is how we learn and move on. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Prism of the Past. I know it was a little more serious, a little more disturbing uh, than some other episodes, but I still hope that you were able to learn something from this as well. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following and subscribing so that you can stay up to date with all of the latest episodes. Thank you again for making it to another Prism of the Past. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.